five, just short of the five. I'm reading now from verse two. At that time, the Lord said unto Joshua, Make these sharp knives and circumcise again the children of Israel the second time. Make these sharp knives and circumcise the children of Israel. Well, as I read that, you said that that's normal. Didn't God command Abraham to be circumcised and to circumcise all the children, the descendants of Abraham? That's normal. Didn't Moses also tell them that this is what must be done? Every Israelite that's a male must be circumcised. That's normal. Now you need to understand. If you look at chapter 4 of Joshua, they just crossed over. River Jordan. And if you look at chapter 6, you'll see that Jericho was right there. And so, chapter 5 is between River Jordan and uh, Jericho. What's the implication of that? The implication is Jordan, after they passed over Jordan, and now they came to this territory, Jordan had closed up. And we're told in the earlier chapters of Joshua, that Jordan was overflowing, and all the millions of them were hedged in between Jordan and Jericho. And the word of the Lord came to them and said, Take sharp knives and circumcise the children of Israel. Ah, that's very dangerous. Why do we say that's dangerous? Because if you come back to Genesis chapter 34, Genesis chapter 34, you will see what happened when the Shechemites were circumcised. And at this very time now, the Lord was telling them, I'm moving you on to the land of Canaan and to the land of promise. And the uncircumcised will not inherit that land. And even though you might think this is dangerous to be circumcised at the time when you are between Jordan and Jericho. And the people of Jericho are battle ready, wanting to destroy the children of Israel. If they were circumcised, they're going to be physically weak. They will not be able to fight. And but Joshua obeyed the Lord. If we're going to move on and we're going to cross over. Unto the Canaan land, the promise of God. Whatever God commands, we live by the word. Believe in the Lord. Whatever he says, it may look incredible, almost impossible. It may look unbelievable. It may look like this unreasonable. This is not the right thing to do at this time. But that is exactly what to do. To live by the word. This new year, we're going to live by the word. And when God gives us a word and he gives us a commandment, we're not going to confer with flesh and blood. And we're not going to be reasoning, is that right? Is it the right time to do that? Can we go that direction now? We'll not question the Lord. Look at Genesis chapter 34. I'm reading from verse 13. Genesis chapter 34, verse 13. And the sons of Jacob answered Shechem and Hamor his father deceitfully, and said, Because he had defiled Dinah their sister. And they said unto them, We cannot do this thing to give our sister to one that is uncircumcised, for that were a reproach unto us. But in this will we consent unto you, if ye, if ye will be as we be, that every man of you be circumcised, then will we give our daughters unto you, and we will take your daughters unto us, and we will dwell with you, and we will become one people. Then in verse 17 it says, But if ye will not hack him unto us, and to be circumcised, then all take our daughter and we will be gone. And their words pleased him more and shake him, harm or son. Let's come now to verse 24. In verse 24, and unto him all and unto shake him, his son, and all that went out of the gate of, the, of his city. Every meal was what? circumcised all that went out of the gate of the city and it came to pass on the third day when they were sore 
when they were so weak and when they were having the pain of that circumcision the two of the sons of jacob simon and levi dinah's brethren took each of each man a sword and came upon the city boldly and slew how many people all the males they were not strong enough to fight because of the circumcision and i got told joshua take a sharp knife i know jericho is on this side Jordan is on this side to flee. You cannot flee uh, into Jordan because it's closed up. And you cannot also besiege Jer Jericho because the walls are thick and high. And the armies, they're ready to fight. And yet at that time, in that dangerous valley, circumcise the children of Israel. What he, Joshua, will say, God, look at Jordan. God, look at Jericho. And look at Genesis chapter 34. And look at what you are telling us to do. If the people will see us over the walls that will circumcise all the males of the land of Israel, of the people of God, they will see that we are sore, we are weak, and we are having the pain of circumcision. They will come on us and destroy us. But you see, Joshua did not confer with flesh and blood. God had said it. If we are going to enter into the land of Canaan this year, thank God we are going to enter. Every one of us we are going to enter. All you need to do is just obey the Lord and live by the word and not be reasoning and not be saying, you know what happened in the wilderness is the reasoning. That's what happened in the wilderness. And when they saw the giants and the wall cities, we cannot, we cannot because of this. They used too much of their brain. They need to use their heart in believing the Lord and following after the Lord. But as we come to this new year, our commitment is whatsoever the Lord says that we will do. I said that we will do. Living by the word and believing the Lord. I'm coming back now to Joshua chapter 5. Joshua chapter 5 and verse 3. And Joshua made him sharp knives. And circumcised the children of Israel at the heel of the false king. Joshua made sharp knives and circumcised those children of Israel that had not been circumcised at the heel of the false king. What's the implication of that for you and for me? The Lord is saying, if we're going to enjoy the promises of God in Canaan land, in the promised land this new year there's an experience we ought to have which is called circumcision we're looking at Deut deuteronomy chapter 10. deuteronomy chapter 10 i'll read verse 11 and then i'll read verse 16. deuteronomy chapter 10. let's look at verse 11 and the lord said unto me arise and take thy journey before the people that they may go in and possess the land which i swear unto their fathers to give them the lord is saying rise shall are we going to rise up this year and he says take your journey will you move on this year and leave all the things of the past leave them in the past old things old action old disposition old behavior old lifestyle and if any of those old things are coming back they just say no that's old this is a new year. Any of those old attitudes, old response, old reaction, trying to come back to say, no, no, that's the old reaction. That's what I used to do. That's what I used to say. That's how I used to act. When somebody did something and stepped on my toes, that's the way I used to respond. That's old. That's old. That's old. It will not be this year. I said it will not be this year. After I told them they should take their journey and then move on. Then he tells us in verse 16, Circumcise, therefore, the first king of your heart. Circumcise, therefore. And that's what the Lord was reminding them of. He said, Joshua, I want to remind the children of Israel, the uncircumcised cannot inherit the promised land. Therefore, take sharp knives and circumcise them that they will remember it takes a circumcised heart disposition and will and life to be able to get into the land of promise chapter 30 of deuteronomy deuteronomy chapter 30 and i'm reading from verses 5 and 6 
Deuteronomy chapter 30, verses 5 and 6. In verse 6, And the Lord thy God will bring thee into the land. You didn't hear that? The Lord thy God will bring thee into the land, which thy fathers possessed. And then it says, And thou shalt possess it. And he will do thee good. And he will multiply thee above thy fathers. Whatever our fathers have got you, you know, there are people that will be saying, well, you know, daddy did not have much more than this, so why do I want more? Because the Lord said, he'll multiply you above your fathers. You'll go beyond where our fathers have gone, where our parents have gone. The poverty they experienced, we're not going to experience. The sorrows they had, we're not going to have. The calamities they had, we're not going to have. And the joy, ultimate joy, final joy, peace, happiness, and contentment they didn't have, we're going to have in Jesus' name. But I want, to, I want you to notice something. Immediately, the Lord said that they'll move on to that land of Canaan, flowing with milk and honey, and they're going to have multiplication beyond their fathers. Look at verse 6, immediately after that. He said, and the Lord will circumcise thine heart. Which is telling us that circumcision of heart is a prerequisite, it's a condition, a precondition for entering into the land of Canaan. I'm pleading with every one of you and every one of us uh, this year, that just, just look at your life and say, I, I don't want to think about any other thing now. I'm not going to, you know, think about him, about her, about this, about that. I want to think about my life. What kind of blessing do I want in this new year? And what kind of progress do I I want in this new year and what kind of life do I want to live in this new year and what kind of possession what kind of provision do I want this year what kind of protection preservation do I want for this new year and what kind of inheritance or heritage do I want in this new year there must be a time in your life you become you know so wise that you think about just your life you don't want to live day after day and day after the suffering the same thing you suffered last year yeah. You don't want to go through all the oppression, all the affliction, all the fear, all the panic, all the worry, all the anxiety you had in the previous year. You want to stay and you want to say, this new year, what kind of life do I want to have? If in the past year, all your life was, you know, kind of bound and, and limited and, and, and crushed because of the things around, you want to ask yourself, what do I want for this year? And if you want to have that Canaan land experience for this year, then you say, uh-huh, I know one thing, a prerequisite. I know a precondition. I know something that must happen, a proviso, something I must have, and that is the circumcision of my heart. And that's why the Lord told Joshua, yes, I know how dangerous other people might think this is, that you'll be circumcised when you are hedged around, hedged within Jordan and Jericho. But that's exactly what you're going to do because the uncircumcised will not be able to inherit the land. Look at verse 6 now, and the Lord thy God, he will do it for us will circumcise thine heart and the heart of thy seed to love the Lord thy God with all thine heart and look up here brothers and sisters you know what I've discovered in Christian race if you love money more than God the money will miss you if you love houses more than God the houses will elude you if you love property more than God that property you will not see but if you turn it around and you love God more than money, God will give you money. If you love God more than job, God will give you the job. If you love God more than whatever, anything, that God says, uh -huh, he puts his love on me. And because he centers his love upon me, I am going to give him everything that he ought to have. If you love God more than wife, God will give you a good wife. Love God more than husband, God will give you a good husband. If you love God more than children, you see, why the people do not have what they ought to have, they love children more than God. They say, children, 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 if I don't have child, I will not come to church. And God says, okay, sit down there, sit down at home. If that is the way, the child will come. When you say, when you see, and when God sees that you love God more than children, then you'll have so many children, you'll not be able to count the number. 
And when God sees that you love him more than anything on earth, all those things it will supply in Jesus' name. That's exactly what Jesus said. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And then what? All these things they will add unto you. That's why he's telling us to be circumcised. And when your heart is circumcised, that you love the Lord thy God with all thine heart and with all thy soul, that thou mayest live and you will live. Jeremiah chapter 4, verse 4. Jeremiah chapter 4. I'm reading from verse 4. What he wants us to do what he wants us to have, what he wants us to experience, so that we can get to that land of promise. Jeremiah chapter 4 verse 4. Here it says, circumcise yourselves to the Lord, and take away the first king of your heart, ye men of Judah, and inhabitants of Jerusalem. Let my fury come forth like fire, and burn that none can quench it, because of the evil of your doings. We come to the New Testament Testament. Now we're looking at Colossians chapter 2. Colossians chapter 2. I'm reading from verses 10 and 11. Colossians chapter 2. Reading from verses 10 and 11. In verse 10 it says, And ye are complete in him. This year you'll be complete. Anything missing in your blessing, missing in your life, God will supply in Jesus' name. The provision of Calvary, the provision of the cross, and the provision through the death of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord will grant to every one of us this year in Jesus' name. And you'll find you are complete in Him, which is the head of all principality and power. I want you to notice something now. After that completeness that we have in Christ, it then tells us and reminds us how that abundance will come. How the blessing will come. How the riches of the glory that we have in Jesus Christ, how that will come into our lives. In verse 11, in whom also ye are, what? You see, circumcised. Or well, the circumcision made without hands. You see, many people, they don't make all these connections. And they just say, I'm complete in Christ, I'm complete in Christ. But the condition, precondition, the prerequisite for that completeness in Christ and for the inheritance, the blessings of the Lord to be abundant, to be flowing in our lives. All that they do not know. You don't just read one verse. Read the next verse, especially when there is no full stop at the end of the verse you are reading. In whom also ye are circumcised was the circumcision made without hands in putting off the body of sins putting what off or on again this year are we going to put on sin add more sin what are we going to do we we'll put off the body the body of sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ and it is when we do that, we're going to find that the riches of heaven, the riches of glory will be yours in Jesus' name. That's how to make this year new. Number one is to leave the wilderness behind. Number two is to live by the word, believing the Lord. Number three, now loving and worshiping before the Lord. I want to remind you once again in Joshua chapter 5, Joshua chapter 5. That Joshua and the children of Israel were before Jericho. And chapter 6, we have Jericho walls falling down. By the way, what did Joshua have to do before Jericho wall, fell, walls fell down? Joshua chapter 5. I'm reading from verse 12. From verse 12 it says, And the manna ceased on the morrow after they had eaten of the old corn of the land. Neither are the children of Israel manna any more. Before I go on, can you look up for a moment? If you are eating something every day for one year, for 10 years, for 40 years, all of a sudden you cross over. And then that thing starts. If it were the old generation of the children of Israel, they'll murmur. They'll say, where is the manna now? If God wants to give us something new, what do you need to preserve? I'm used to this one. My taste is used to this one. 
This is what we have eaten every day for 40 years. And now they've taken everything away. But in this case now, this is a new generation of the children of Israel. Did they mama? Did they grumble? Did they complain? Did they think of stoning Joshua like those people wanted to stone Moses? No. Because when you come into the new life, when God gives you the better sin and the old sin is gone, you say, praise the Lord, it's a new life and it's a new year and it's a new provision. And the new thing the Lord has given, we're going to be satisfied with it in Jesus' name. And then it says, but they did eat of the fruit of the land. This year, you will eat the fruit of the land. The fruit of the land. You will eat in Jesus' name. No matter the condition of the world, no matter the economy, no matter the recession, no 